Who says you can't catch fish on dry flies? We're gonna give you some tips on fall stillwater fishing. Dude, that's a big brown Sorry about the wind, guys, but uh, how it goes. They Mr. Like, Egan with uh, fish right after that one. They like wind, though, with hoppers. Hoppers and wind. Hopper yeah. chopper, they call it. They go together like lamb and tuna fish. Cutty on the hopper. Cutty on the hopper. That's another uh, interesting little tidbit. When it's flat calm on these still waters, not so bueno. No, not so good. Good point, Curtis Fry. Death on lakes is flat, calm, and sunny. So the days that everybody says is, it was just beautiful out, that's the worst possible conditions. You want a little wind. You don't want too much wind, but a little wind Create a little chop, make the fish a little more comfortable, create some feeding lanes, some foam lines, and look what happens, the fish show up. This one looked like a floating piece of debris, also known as debris, uh, out here. Where there's lots of suspended pieces of weed that are broken off from the bottom. and He was just chilling near the surface, so I spotted him. Stripped in a few times, recast, came right up and ate the hopper. Now, are there other types of fishing in the fall? <laughs> yes, so, so far our only tip is to fish dry flies. And it's windy, but... It's very windy, but that's a good thing. And we do recommend dries, but there are other ways to catch fish, which we hope to show you here in a minute. <laughs> but until the dry fly fishing slows, it's kind of hard to stop doing it. Okay, I just didn't want to be like these two and throw only dry flies. So I threw on this new little jig minnow that I will post a picture somewhere in the screen. And about first cast, cut this ginormous cutthroat. Actually, one of the smaller specimens. But streamers are also good. The minnows are on the move. Fish are feeding. Yeah, he ate a bigger fly. He ate a bigger fly. I changed uh, with all this chop. I was only getting love on the biggest fly I had on, so I put two other flies that are that same size and look out. Fish on. So I've got basically a chubby Chernobyl on top and two foam hoppers point in the middle, and Cheech just hooked up behind. Oh, oh. that would have been a double. Almost had a double. Oh, that's a chunkier fish. A little longer, a little kind of lean still, but a little bit on the longer side. There goes the rod. And then hold him up to the camera. We can maybe use that one as the thumbnail. You got it. You ready? Yes, sir. Well, that's what you get. Good times, dry fly cutties. Adios. One other fall tip, switch up your lines. Fish the parabolic. Just whack one on a booby. I'm getting some decent action here in the first few casts on a black and chartreuse. Dry flies are still working. 
The streamers had a good bite there. All right. But we're mixing it up. What do you got on there? This is a parabolic line. So, of course, I love fishing this line. I fish it quite a bit, but Lance is still throwing dry flies. And anytime there are fish that are coming up and eating, you got to look at how they're feeding. And so we're noticing that a lot of these fish are coming straight up from the bottom, which means there are a lot of fish that are down deeper that are willing to eat. So uh, I just switched over to this parabolic line. We'll see if we can... See if we can hook a fish. And just like that. Just like that. Lance missed one, so I decided I would pick up some slack. But I Lance is casting toward the shore, and the beauty of the parabolic line is you can just kind of cast it all around the boat because uh, you're you're just kind of covering a bunch of different areas. Whoa. Rainbow? I don't. It could be a big rainbow. That or he's foul hooked. Man. I'll grab a net. It feels strong though. Got him, pal. Oh! He gone. Do we have a hole in this net? We're just a really bad net jobber. First okay, time. so on this parabolic line, I've got a short butt section, probably only like three or four feet long. And from there, I've got a tippet ring tied in right here. And I've got about, I don't know, five feet. And I've got a tungsten little blank saver, jig leech. Just a little tungsten bead, jig hook, barbless. All this is is like African goat and a marabou tail. Nothing fancy. Then I've got about five more feet, and I've got a weightless fly. This one's a little comorant fly. I guess we'll have to do a tutorial on that one. And five more feet, and I've got a booby. Now that booby keeps my, my leader sweeping upward so that I can get the full effect of the parabolic. The other thing with this line is because it has three distinct sinking densities throughout the line, it's important to be able to be able to, be able to cast as far as you can in order to get all three densities out there. If you don't cast it very far, it's just like fishing a normal type five. Um, and if you only cast half the line, you're casting only a type five and a type three. So in order to get the type five, type three, and type five out, you need to be able to cast pretty dang far. Like two miles. Two miles, yeah. And, are you watching this too? Except that it's 353, not 535. It's 353, that's what Lance said. I just screwed that up. So, <laughs> yeah, I get it. Type 5, type 3, type 5. Shut up, Lance. All right, the other thing, I notice I have a little burr on my, my booby hook point. That will cost me fish. So, as you can see on my Stillwater life jacket, I just have a simple zinger, really lightweight nippers. Uh, so they're not weighting me down and a hook hone so that I can just take this fly and run it through there usually just two times and then you run your finger to see if you can feel a burr and that that should do it the fly is ready to fish now good to go well the dry fly bite waned a little sure did so got a little breezy so we put on the over sweep line. A sweep line, also known as parabolic in the scientific angler's terms. Yes, this one's an airflow sweep. Chief is fishing the uh, oh, parabolic from SA. Nice. Chunky fish. 
good looking fish. Yeah, well built. Silver humongous. Humongous. We do have a tutorial on the humongous. Yep. Gone. Nice one. Gonzo. Did you see the take? I did see the take right here on this point. Uh, I just missed one on my previous, no, well, maybe two casts previous. I missed the fish and then uh, threw out and watched that one come up out of the rocks and grab hold of the fly. Strip set and you're home free. So it's a pretty big change, line and fly. So something's getting a little slower this time of year. Try something else. The breeziness has kicked up, but whacking them with the old humongous rig there. Indeed. Basically a couple of buggers and a sweep line. Party came out. There he goes. Cutty nice. out. Torpedo. Tactic change, line change. Start picking up more fish. Go figure. See the colors have changed over the way. Well, what technique did you end with here? Uh, floating line and a couple of small tungsten buggers. Floating line, small buggers, decent fish. Fatty, that is a fatty. Nice. It is windy out, but we're catching some nice cuts. I think the moral of the story today is don't focus too much on one thing. We get a lot of people that come in the store and tell us this is what's working here, this is what's working there. We've caught them on dries, we've caught them on streamers on sweep lines, we've caught them on streamers on uh, floating lines, midge tips. This time of year the water's cold enough the fish can be anywhere in the lake. So we've caught them up in three and four feet of water, we've caught them over 40 feet of water. They're all over the place. So pick your poison, pick how you want to chase the fish and go catch a few on a local still water.